lenses. Alongside your camera, they're the most important pieces of equipment that you'll ever buy in terms of photography. But when it comes to choosing the right lens for you, it can be a bit of a minefield. All the different price brackets, all the different focal lengths, primes, zooms, which one's the right one to go for? In this latest episode of The Basics of Photography with Yorkshire Photo Walks, I'll be talking you through, step by step, the process behind choosing the best lens for your type of photography and helping you to get the best deal possible on the perfect lens for you. Let's get the technical bit out of the way first. When it comes to buying lenses, one of the most important things to start off by doing is making sure that you're buying the right lens for your camera. There are different types of camera sensor sizes, from micro four thirds to full frame, and different lenses will project different focal lengths depending on the size of sensor in your camera. So if you have got a micro four-thirds camera or a crop format sensor, make sure that you're getting a crop format or micro four-thirds lens. Equally, if you've got a full-frame camera, make sure that you're getting a full-frame lens for it. Because if you don't, then you'll start to see crop marks or vignetting at the corners of where your lens opens to its widest extent. The next thing that we need to get our head around of focal lengths. Focal lengths are measured in millimetres and they basically mean how wide or narrow your field of view that you're looking at when you make a photograph. They can be bracketed into three different categories. These come as wide angle lenses, mid-range lenses and telephoto lenses. Now traditionally the focal length was the measurement between the midpoint of your camera's lens and the sensor at the back of the camera, or film as it was back in the good old days. That's now not often the case with new technology, but the numbers are there to help you to gauge what sort of lens it is you need for a specific job. So wide angle lenses go from small numbers of millimetres up to about 35. Then mid-range lenses go from 35 up to about 80. And then telephoto lenses go from 80 plus. So wide angle lenses, they do the job of taking wide angle photographs. So great for landscapes and architectural shots where you're trying to get a lot in. Then mid-range lenses are traditionally sort of portrait lenses and used for still lives, so you're not too close but you're not too far away either. And telephoto lenses give you extra magnification, so they're brilliant for sports photography and wildlife photography where you need to be further away but still get reasonably close to your subject. Within those brackets, there are also other smaller brackets. So, for example, within wide-angle lenses, we've also got fisheye lenses, which are extreme wide-angle. So extreme that they start to distort the photograph, so it starts looking curved at the edges, because the lens is trying to get as much in as it can possibly get. We've also got macro lenses, which allow you to get closer to your subject in order to get a really detailed close-up. Within the telephoto bracket, we've also got super telephoto zoom lenses, which allow you to get really close to something really far in the distance. 
Now when it comes to choosing the right lens for you, it comes down to a few different factors. First of all, what sort of photography are you interested in? For example, if you're going to go mad on wildlife photography, then there's not really much point in buying a wide-angle lens. At the same time as if you're never going to take a photograph of wildlife, but you're really interested in landscape photography, then it's more the wide to mid-angle ranges that you're going to go for. The next dilemma that we have is whether we go with a prime lens or a zoom lens. Zoom lenses do pretty much exactly what they say on the tin. They allow you to zoom. So they give you a range of different focal lengths from a widest angle to a narrowest angle, giving you larger scope for different types of photographs using the, just the one lens. With prime lenses, you just fix to one focal length, which some of you may think, well, surely that's a bit limiting. Instead of having to change my lenses over all the time, why would I not just go with a zoom and be able to take as many different photographs as I possibly could with just one lens? The reason why people go for prime lenses is because you get slightly better quality photographs. I like to use what I call my glazing analogy. Imagine that you are standing looking at a spectacular view, just through your eyes. The view is absolutely phenomenal. When you start putting pieces of glass in front of your view, then light is going to be reflected away. And the more pieces of glazing that you have in front of that view, the less impressive it's going to appear. And it's a little bit the same when we're looking at camera lenses. Because zoom lenses have so many pieces of glass in them, or what we call lens elements, there's a lot of reflection of light going on here, there and everywhere. With prime lenses, there aren't as many pieces of glass, so therefore the reflection is limited, so you get a better quality view of what you're photographing. When it comes to choosing a decent zoom lens, the first thing I look for is the difference between the widest angle focal length and the narrowest angle focal length. The shortest distance between these figures is going to give you fewer lens elements and therefore better quality photographs. So it pays to get a zoom lens that is, for example, as 12 to 24 or 35 to 70, rather than going for one that gives you 28 all the way up to 200. Yes, with a lens like that, you might have more scope in terms of what you can photograph with one lens, but chances are it's going to be bigger and heavier, and it's also going to limit the amount of quality that you get back from the photographs that you take. When it comes to choosing prime lenses, you tend to get more for your money in the wide to mid-range lens bracket. So focal lengths between about 35mm and 80mm. To be honest, I very rarely take my 50mm lens off my camera, even though I do a wide range of different sorts of photography. Mainly because it gives me quite a bit of scope if I just put in a bit of extra legwork. If I step back, I can get brilliant wide-angled shots, and if I step closer, I can get really good narrow-angle shots with a brilliant depth of field, because another plus point of prime lenses is that they usually allow you to use wider apertures, which gives you shallower depths of field. When it comes to buying lenses, it can be really easy to go one of two ways. Not have enough coverage to get the photographs that you want, or go completely overboard and get so many different lenses you don't know which one to choose. To be honest, when I go out with my camera, I very rarely take more than two lenses. I'll take a third if I'm doing something absolutely specific that I need it for. But to save weight and the amount that I'm spending on lenses, two is just about right for me, even though I do a broad range of photography. When it comes to having that broad range, my advice would be to go, first of all, with a decent quality wide-angle zoom lens. So if you're on a crop format sensor, something like a 12 to 24 mm lens would be perfect. If you're on a full frame camera, then that would probably equate to something like a 24 to 70. 
then you can get a really good quality prime lens to meet that middle bracket. So again, on a full frame camera you'd be looking at a good 50mm lens or a 35mm lens if you're on one of the crop format sensors that usually give you a really good scope between close up and wide angle. Then you can start to look at the telephoto zooms. If you're really going to get interested in taking lots of telephoto shots then this is where you're going to spend a lot of money but it is worth spending money if you're going to do it all the time. Personally I don't do a lot of it so I've just got a simple 200mm lens that does the job for me. But if you're going to get really into it, as I say, you're going to have to start looking at 200mm plus, which is where the money comes in. The last thing that I'd like to cover is the type or make of lens that you buy and where you buy it from. My best piece of advice here is to buy a lens that is the same make as your camera. It might set you back a bit more in terms of cost, but because it works with your camera, you know that it's going to give you the best quality results that you can possibly get. There are other companies such as Sigma and Tamron that make really good quality lenses for all different camera brands, but with these you've always got to be careful and my best recommendation would be to try them out on your camera before you buy them. It might save you a bit of money, but it might set you back on quality at the end of the day. So always be careful. Any good camera shop should allow you to try lenses on before you buy them. Which leads me on to the internet option. There are so many different places out there to buy lenses on the internet. And although I wouldn't rule it out as an option, I would always be very sceptical. As I say, it's always good to try lenses out on your camera before you buy them. Obviously you can't do this online, so although you might be saving yourself a bit of money, again, you might be risking the amount of quality that you get from that lens when it eventually arrives. A final piece of advice is not to be put off by second-hand lenses, because there's some excellent ones out there. If you know where to look, then there's always going to be one or two that crop up that give you a fantastic lens at a brilliant price. Again, always go to reputable dealers. So if you've got a local camera shop, make sure that they allow you to try the lenses out on your camera before you buy them. Or if you're looking online, make sure that they've got a really good system in place for showing you what the quality of the lens is. Most good online camera sellers that deal in second-hand equipment will have a plus and minus scale to give you a good idea of the type and quality of lens that you're going to buy. As I said right at the very beginning of this video, buying lenses for your camera can be an absolute minefield. And I know I've given you a lot of information to take in there, so please feel free to watch this video as many times as you need to in order for that information to sink in and to help you to make the best possible choice for you. If you've enjoyed this video, found it useful, then please keep an eye on YorkshirePhotoWalks.com and YouTube for future episodes of the basics of photography and other video tutorials. If you've not yet subscribed to the Yorkshire Photo Watch channel on YouTube then please do so and hit the bell button so you're notified when we post new videos. Until the next time, thank you for watching.